I think because I came to that understanding of like your business only grows as much as you do. Growth comes from discomfort or it's usually associated when you're growing, it's uncomfortable. I'm going to be okay with being uncomfortable. And the first uncomfortable thing is radical honesty with yourself. Matt, you've been building HL Pro Tools and, and building your companies now for a few years and you've been an entrepreneur for a long time. What are some of the most important habits that you've developed that have helped you to get where you are? There's a phrase, I think I heard it at an event first, is someone was saying like, your business only grows as much as you do. And especially as the business owner, I don't know if you're, if you're a business owner listening, you hear that, like it resonated. The first time I heard that, your business only grows as much as you do. And I, I could look back and see that there were these seasons of plateaus or surge of growth where it was very, very much so aligned to the things that I was growing in personally and the things that I was um, allowing myself to step, step into that might have been uncomfortable. Usually discomfort is associated with growth, those growing opportunities. And so even the world and, and, and space of habits is uncomfortable for me. I'm not a naturally disciplined person. I just, I'm not. And so I'm inclined to do things that I find fun and I'll just naturally prioritize those. But if it's not fun, which a lot of like, you know, healthy habits are, I, I just won't do them or I won't be consistent with them. So like, that's, that's the, that's the issue there is like, I needed consistency to see any really dramatic impact or outcome from it, but I'm not naturally inclined to do that. Alternatively, my wife on the other, like she was valedictorian for undergrad, for master. Like you, if, she, if someone gives her a, a to-do list, she's compelled. She's driven to check all the boxes, to do all the homework, to make sure everything is done to the best of her ability. I'm like, if it's fun, I will do it naturally. If it's not fun, I'm probably gonna forget about it or ignore it. And so coming back to the conversation, what are the habits that I was able to instill that have like, produce this kind of growth. And so I think the first thing is weird to say of a habit, but it's like constant self-awareness, like proactive self-awareness. It's that gut check of like, how am I feeling today? What do I want to do? I think that was like freeing in that for me is to recognize it in myself that I do what I want to do. And so if I can say to myself, this is something I find fun, something I want to do, it'll happen naturally. Or this is something I don't want to do, or I'm not going to find fun. Then I can identify that my likelihood of doing it is very low. Therefore, I shouldn't be responsible for it. And so it's weird that I've created a strong habit of delegation, but it came from self-awareness. So um, in like practical terms, it is training myself again and again and again to very quickly discern, is this something that I'm going to enjoy doing and therefore likely do again and again? If not, how do I assign this to somebody else um, as quickly as possible? Because chance of success is going to be very low for me. And so that takes both like self-awareness and a willingness to be really honest with yourself, right? Like you have to be able to say, I know I could do this, but I'm probably not going to do it well. So why keep putting that burden on me if I could delegate it instead? Yeah. And so I don't know if that's like a habit, but I think it's the, sure. I do keep a daily check-in with myself. I think because I came to that understanding of like your business only grows as much as you do. Growth comes from discomfort or it's usually associated when you're growing, it's uncomfortable. I'm going to be okay with being uncomfortable. And the first uncomfortable thing is radical honesty with yourself. And that's what, like I start with is like that is like I celebrate it now. Like deficits create opportunity, right? That that gap in what I'm unable to do creates opportunity for other folks. A lot of folks feel the pressure like I gotta be able to do all the things, know all the things, be expert at all the things. And I just come back to myself time and time again to recognize where I'm not inclined to thrive. And I guess there's a discerning there too, because it's not that it's not that I say I'm unwilling to grow in that area. Cause there there have been ways where like you do need to like, you need to get over it. You need to like, just be, uh, find better. But I guess I just match that accountability. So like, I'll say like, here's a, here's a habit of growth in the business that you didn't think through. It's consistency. Like how you do one thing is how you do all the things. I still don't have the most conviction about that. Even though like I tell myself that's true, because here's how I know I don't have the conviction about that is, um, how much of a challenge it is for me in, in the world of physical fitness or um, uh, nutritional fitness, right? Like the, 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 the physical side of it. It's eating right and, and being active. Eating right and being active, um, I, I just know if I don't have naturally inclined fun associated with that, it falls off. It falls off in consistency. So what have I been able to do? Uh, gamify accountability, right? So it's like, what is fun is games and scoreboards and stuff like that. So like I gamify. And right now, like the big one is 
is my uh, watch. So like two metrics that I can keep is I have uh, my steps. Like I just, I get those and it, it tells me 10,000 steps a day. That's like, that's the game I'm always playing. And then I've got this other thing where I literally have the trainer send me work and he knows you did it or you didn't do it. And Tyler, you know, this has been going on, um, but gosh, it's probably almost eight months now of consistency. And I just had to gamify it. Um, and so now I can fit it in and it just like, it naturally occurs and it doesn't matter, you know, what's going on. And so, um, yeah, that consistency that like in, in all areas of your life, um, and being more self-aware of, of creating just the opportunity to thrive here. Um, one, one fun example that we instituted recently is the hour between dinner and uh, bedtime. It's not even an hour, but there's basically one. It's roughly comes for us. It's 7 to 8 p.m. Every single day is dinner's done. So that means there's a ton of dishes uh, and the kids are getting ready for bed. That's like bath time for us. That's story time. That's like all the things. Maybe there's some like games and fun. And it's like, that's, you know, and, and you know, our youngest goes to bed maybe earlier on the 7.30 side and our oldest goes to bed, you know, closer to, closer to 8 p.m. And for the sake of margin, like prioritizing, like what, what's a habit I wanted to keep is being present with my kids and being present with my wife. Uh, and so I saw the opportunity. I was like, man, this is a gap where it's usually like the stress. T- it's not, I'm not super stressed, but you're just like, we're getting through it because I'm like, I need to get through bedtime and bath time as fast as possible to get downstairs to do all the dishes. And it would turn into literally be like an hour of like rushing through this time with, with my kids. And then another hour of rushing through attack the house. And usually for my wife and I be divide and conquer. So I'm taking, uh, the kitchen and she's taking the laundry room. And, and so it's not, a, it's not a connected time then. So it's like two hours where it's like, we're, we're all near each other, but not fully present. And I recognize this is going on and, um, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm inclined to delegate. And, uh, so we found a local, uh, high school student who had said, Hey, I'm looking for extra work and found someone now comes every day from most days, most days. Sometimes she, you know, she takes like We've like reverse date nights. So like Friday nights often is, is hard for us to fill there, but like almost every day of the week, um, she'll come for one hour and do the dishes and clean up all the toys. And we have two little boys. And so it's like, it's chaos here. And it's amazing. It's been amazing. So now like, I feel like I'm empowered to keep the the habit of being present at night with my kids as they're going to bed. Like, like the experience now, it's been like transformative where now I get to, like we're reading, it used to, reading like a bedtime story or reading a book. I don't know if any other parents resonate with this. We're like, previously I feel like we do one. And it's like, this is it. Like I, I'm, I'm the one saying like, this is it. Why? Because I'm thinking like, I need to get you to bed because then I need to go downstairs and clean and like get the house back and put, put back together. Now I'm like, it's seven 45. Like everything's being taken care of downstairs. There's no rush. And so I get to be the parent who's like, you want to do another? You want to like hang out and talk a little bit more. Um, and it's been such a rewarding thing that has come, I wouldn't have expected this. This has been a consequence of being disciplined on the business side that's now bled into space and margin and just a, a very rich aspect of my life. Um, and if, if you want like numbers behind it, it's, it's crazy too. It's like, so, you know, as a high school student, I don't remember what you, what you made in high school. It's a very low stress job. Um, I'm impressed. She's actually, uh, doesn't even have a driver's license. Her parents are, I kind of feel bad for the parents, but I'm like, you know what? They're, she's learning entrepreneurship and, and, you know, uh, cause they drive her <laughs> for one hour of work, uh, you know, every night, but they don't live far away for 15 bucks an hour. So this, this turns into roughly 300 bucks, uh, a month. And for, for that time back, I'm like, this is now my favorite subscription. Like this is more valuable to me than I don't have a Peloton. But if I was like paying for a Peloton or a gym membership, like this membership, the membership of evenings that feel connected and close to my family, just um, incredible. I always think it's interesting how in business, we, we often think it's like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. You should delegate tasks below your pay grade to team members on your team or or whatever that may be. But sometimes we forget to do that same thing at home, where that's where we want to have, like a business, we want to have margin and time to be able to execute and do work and, and create impact at home. We also want to create impact and we want to we want to experience. And so I love that example. And I think 
taking that same concept and looking at it in throughout like any entrepreneur's home life as well as business is like, what are the tasks that you're doing that are low level frustration that you're doing all the time? And how could you like get rid of that and free up that time back just to live again? Right. And so I, I love that example of yours. And I think that it shows really like good examples of delegation, good examples of task prioritization and really just about what is life and business actually about. Oh, yeah, for sure. In the journey of growth and building things, this has been a recurring theme there. And if we get back to this idea of habits, I think the third one, if I'd round it out, is I'll say learning. Like, I, I feel like I just aggressively learn and and use my time to learn very, very well there. And so I think, you know, best case scenario, like you could call it just in time learning. I think I do. It's like you can develop the muscle of learning. I've gone through, you know, seasons of formal academia and, and you know, an MBA and all these sort of things. It's It's been different, the style of learning that I do now um, and, the, and that habit of learning where, I don't know, like your ability to to grow and to expand beyond yourself and, and have these ideas. Like anything that's been good in, in my business, I feel like I, I didn't pioneer that idea. Actually, even this idea of hiring someone to help around the house for little things, like I learned it in a different mastermind. All right. I remember like the big dream that we've had and I've been like working on with my wife is this idea of like a house manager. We kind of felt like, you know, maybe we couldn't she, whatever, there's varying levels of comfort of like, you know, having someone fully integrated with your house. And there's been a season of, you know, little kids and illness and, or just sickness and what, all this sort of stuff. So we haven't gotten to that place of it, but I saw other examples of people doing this and, and this, like this current thing that we keep there, like that was because of other folks there, but it was putting myself in a position of continuously thinking like, I want to be learning, I want to be growing and I want to be open to these new ideas that, that, I'm not just going to manifest by sitting in silence, and uh, and it, what a gift it is that we, you know we've like as a species we're we're connected, we share, we collaborate, and um, so a lot of podcasts, a lot of audiobooks is my preferred style of learning. I've gotten really good at that, like audio, audio learning, um, listening to learn. And if anybody's listening to this on a podcast right now, you're doing the exact same thing. Um, but it's been a really cool habit that I've kept of expanding and growing in this thing because I, it's weird to say it's like, it's not multitasking, but it is kind of multi, I think of like cross-functional growth, right? So this is like, if you think of like an exercise, there's these full body movements, like a burpee. It's one of my favorite moves, right? So you're like a burpee, like what muscle group are you working? You're like, well, you got like your upper body and your shoulders and your arms and your legs and your core um, in one movement. But it's like I could sit there and just do like bicep curls or I could do burpees and uh, or I could do squats or I could do burpees. And the audio learning modality makes me feel like I get to do more of I spend my time doing burpees than a single movement. So a lot of times I'll, I'll listen while I'm working out is actually that's that's kind of the common theme there. Yeah, I find it, it's easier for me to feel like I'm being productive because sometimes learning feels uh, it, you're like you're being passive. You're not. It just feels that way because the activity is different. So I, I love I love combining it with working out or riding a bike or doing something. Um, any kind of last words of wisdom to people who are trying to figure out maybe they're stuck. Maybe they're looking for like they're ready for another season of growth. Uh, what advice would you give an entrepreneur who is looking at um, really stretching things out in their coming months. If you feel like you're preparing for a big season of growth or trying to initiate growth, I resonate with momentum feeling like living. And so, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs feel that. So if you feel stagnant, if you're like, man, I just want to feel alive again. I want to create momentum. I want to create that kind of growth. The coolest mental gymnastics hack that I've done is the false constraint of time. I think Ed Milet talks about this really aggressively where we choose to evaluate ourselves in arbitrary means, right? You Naturally, we, we collect and, and evaluate on a daily, on a weekly, on a monthly, on a yearly, maybe you'd say quarterly in there. And depending on how large of an evaluation period that you decide to guide yourself by, 
it kind of determines how quickly you grow. And so I would encourage you just to start to shorten it down. So goals or measurements that you may have kept annually, maybe keep those monthly or things that you might've kept monthly, maybe make those weekly or you know, if they were weekly, maybe keep those daily. Just that false constraint of a shorter period of evaluation has what has really stimulated me to um, to grow at a clip that when you zoom out feels aggressive, but because I'm choosing to do it in this in this different evaluation terms and just and just giving myself a different language um, to measure my growth by, it actually doesn't feel exhausting. It feels life giving, and I think the best season that I can relate it to is. N- is new parenthood where, um, you know, the, the, the mug, the, the cliche on the mug is the days are long, but the years are short. And that's kind of what it can feel like because when you're a new parent, you're measuring times between naps. Like you're measuring how many diapers are changed in a day. You have a smaller lens, a smaller time lens that you're using to evaluate growth. You see development and advancement in this little baby happen every single day. And so the days feel long. You, so much stuff happens in them. And in, and in hindsight, the, the years feel so short. And I think the same thing can happen in entrepreneurship. It can be a gift for you as you start to choose to, to look through a lens of a smaller time period, put that false constraint on there, and you'll see growth exponentially, almost naturally occur just because you're starting to ask a different question. What did I do in a day as opposed to what did I do in a month? Yeah, and it's interesting how with that, as we get older, we stop, like at the first couple of years, we, we measure kids at how many months old are they? or weeks old, and then months old. And so we automatically start changing those constraints into these longer time periods. Um, and I, I love that as a hack. So I, I really encourage any entrepreneur or uh, anybody looking to really build momentum is to just start measuring shorter. I love that. I think that's really powerful. Um, make sure you check out more of Marketing with Matt. We'll see you on the next episode.